I think it's finally time we discussed Dungeons and Dragons, the new one, that is. Now, of course, we all know the disaster, the absolutely amazing, incredible, and fun disaster that was the 1999-2000 era Jeremy Irons and Marlon Wayans Dungeons and Dragons film that you could have called anything else and it would have worked because it didn't really feel like anything Dungeons and Dragons related uh, outside of, oh, it's just fantasy stuff isn't going on. Just some campy fantasy stuff is going on. That's it. So let's put Dungeons and Dragons. So, eh, but it was very fun. It was a very fun movie. Jeremy Irons' performance is absolutely incredible and very entertaining. I believe he made that movie for his kids and, and it shows. He was hamming it up and he knew that the junior was clapping his hands and laughing at the screen and all that stuff. That is awesome. That is an awesome person right there. It is a very fun time. Much like Uwe Bowles in The Name of the King, that one was also incredible. There's uh, Matthew Lillard's performance and um, King Burt Reynolds, which is also fantastic. Those, both of them are disasters, but they're absolutely fantastic disasters that you can have a lot of fun with. This is a genuinely decent time, a genuinely decent story, a genuinely decent and fun adventure, and very comical. And it fits lore accurate in a way that it is a story that you could sandwich between two other stories that don't mention it, and, uh, and it would still work, basically. They wanted to make a story that wasn't huge, but also wasn't so impacting that other stories would be forced to mention it. For example... Um, a bunch of the story takes place in the city of Neverwinter. Neverwinter, to, for me, I was first introduced to it in the uh, R.A. Salvatore, Karen's Call trilogy, which takes place far into the Neverwinter saga. We have the um, we have the Homeland trilogy, the Crystal Shard trilogy. There's the other trilogy. There's the War of the the Drow and the Dwarves Quintet quadrilogy. Then there's um, the Entruri trilogy, Selzort's trilogy. Then there's um, the, the the Transitions trilogy that you got to go through. And after, finally, after the Ghost King, where the, so much stuff is going on, a hundred years basically has passed since that old era of our legend of just, and we and finally enter the Neverwinter saga, where our boy has come back after almost a century of wandering around with his dwarven buddy Brudor, and sadly King Brunor passes in Gauntlet Grim. He. Can comes back he gets better but by now Drist is alone in Neverwinter and uh, we have Hersko Alegni as the protectorate or so on she's the ruler of Neverwinter and the, so they're taking care of that and then by our boys last trilogy the trilogy before the current trilogy which is this boundless, timeless, and relentless trilogy, um, Dagult Neverember. It, and this trilogy was in in sequence during the makings of this movie. And Dagult Neverember is the protectorate ruler of Neverwinter City. So it, it takes place in this timeline, in this area. It fits into the world. There are people that are name dropped. The people actually did their homework. And I can really appreciate that. So, we have some named characters. They don't really do too much with those named characters. Most of the stuff they do are with characters that don't actually exist in the overall lore. This definitely does feel like a campaign setting, and all of the main characters are the campaign characters that people have, that are the people have picked down as their play player characters. And this is an adventure that they have gone on. And... I found that to be absolutely fantastic. And of course, they have to use thieves and all that stuff. The last film also used two thieves. <laughs> Marlon Wayans and, and the other guy whose name I can never remember. They played thieves and they did their thing, Majiggy. So this is also thieves, but this is a f better story, better told story. You actually get invested into the arcs of the, uh, the character of uh, Chris Pine's character here, who he is actually fantastic in this film. He needs to do more movies like this. He definitely does. I would love to see him in more movies like this. This type of role is perfect for him. And, of course, Michelle Rodriguez, who has been in all sorts of things. She's been in things from Fast and Furious to science fiction movies to complete spin-off spoof craziness like 
the Machete films. If you have not seen Machete, Machete is a Robert Rodriguez-backed film who also directed uh, the Spy Kids movies. And in the first Spy Kids movie, we are introduced to Carmen's and uh, Junie... I think it's Junie and Carmen, right? Uh, we're, we're introduced to their um, uncle, Uncle Machete, played by Danny Trejo. And that that same character is in those spin-off Machete films. And they are completely different. The Spy Kids are kids' movies, the kids' family movies, and Machete is complete balls to the wall. Action, violence, body parts go flying. It is fantastic. And Machete, Michelle Rodriguez is in the Machete films. She is in all sorts of things. She is awesome to see whenever she goes, gets into things. She was in the first Resident Evil movie with by, uh, by um, Anderson. Yeah, that was actually a pretty good film. The first one was actually pretty decent. I thought I liked it. I made a review about it on this channel, one of my very first ones, and I honestly really liked that film, and Michelle Rodriguez was really good in it. So, her in this, she fits. She's fine. She's great. I would like to see her in a sequel to this Dungeons & Dragons Honor Amongst Thieves film. So ultimately, if I'm going to keep this one very short, I don't really have too much to say about this, other than I really enjoyed my time with Dungeons & Dragons Honor Among Thieves, and I would definitely recommend it to you. If you're a Dungeons & Dragons nerd, like if you actually play the tabletop game, this might feel like a tabletop campaign that you have played. I don't play tabletop. I just have about 60 of these types of books, and I've read through them all, so I know the lore, I know the background characters, like Deckle Never Emperor and all that stuff, and characters like that are in here, Saz Tam is in here, it's, it's a fun time, and I definitely would say you could give it a look.